What is up, everybody? We are back with another review. This time we are covering chapter 628 after a break um, from SAU last week. So yeah, if you didn't know, SAU went on a break last week. I think he said he was feeling tired or his wrist was hurting again. But nonetheless, SAU went on a break. And I mean, I'm not too mad. Maybe this was two years ago. I would have been pissed because he kept going on a hiatus. But he's been keeping this going strong for like over a year already, right? I forgot how many chapters have been released since his last hiatus. But hey, can't complain. I can imagine drawing the chapters every single week can get like exhausting and like making a storyboard and all that shit. But. Anyway, let's dive into this chapter. We continue the fight between Tramorite and Gustang. Thankfully, we didn't switch to something else. Low-key, I do want to see Dumas and Bomb fight again, but this is groundbreaking. Uh, this is the first time we've seen like two family leaders fight, so this is a priority. So right away, we start off with Gustang not feeling satisfied with his slap. And like this whole chapter, Gustang is pretty much uh, clowning Traumerai, literally, and making fun of him, egging him on. And that's pretty much all Gustang does, because these guys, they do not actually fight for reals. Like Traumerai does throw a Shinzu blast, but overall, he's just using his animals. And I mean, come on, we've seen this happen a long time ago, and the animals don't do shit to Gustang. So once again, Traumerai tries to use his animals. This time, it is a dragon, I think. Can you guys remind me of the name of this dragon? I completely forgot. Is this one of those water dragons or is this a complete different creature? Anyway, he tries to attack a Stang, but he brings out his knives again and they slice this thing into a billion pieces. And then right after that attack, we just start seeing random animals pop up. So all of a sudden, a uh, Traumerai brings out Megalodon, if that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I don't even know what the fucking Megalodon is. I mean, now I know it's like a shark, but anyway, that's besides the point. A bunch of sharks come out and a giant shark comes out as well. I guess that's the main shark, but once again, they do not do anything to Gustang and they all get sliced up and killed. But this time, Traumerai reforms them with his ancient Shinue. So, like, Traumerai is trying to counter Gustang's way of flaming things up. So, Gustang needs to know, like, the, the structure of something to burn it away. But since Traumerai is using his ancient Shinue to, like, make it all mixed up and discombobulated and shit. It's not going to work, which I mean, Gustang didn't really, even really use flames to begin with, so it doesn't really matter. And Gustang, he counters this by using Tiara's pen. So maybe this is the real pen or maybe he got it from Tiara's dead body somehow. I don't know. Or maybe when Tiara died, it like came back to him like as part of the scripture. Well, he writes like this whole paragraph, like make a huge shark more powerful than Charm Rise. So these guys, they have like a huge shark battle. And that's pretty much what they do all chapter until the very end. So like to me, this has no tension. It's not really exciting, but at the same time, I'm not like too upset or too mad or anything like that because this is the first family leader battle we've seen. So I want to give SIU like I guess uh, some time to kind of prep this up because I know this is monumental and I kind of enjoy the different direction he's taking with this like he's not having them just start fighting he's having them like warm up but I think he's taking way too long like we've seen this happen before this doesn't work Traumara and Gustang are just messing around and we're just wasting time here but anyway this shark tries to attack Traumerai and yeah like I said earlier they have a huge shark battle and I mean everything just kills each other Gustang actually charges up to Traumerai while their troops try to attack each other and he clowns them. He says, my scriptures are better than your animals and he suggests that he lends them his pen to make better animals and Traumerai, he reacts by throwing a Shinzu blast that misses so doesn't do anything and Gustang just continues to write more shit and this time Gustang clowns Traumerai by making him wear a cat mask to like kind of uh, symbolize how he's such a coward and doesn't want to fight. So, wow, to my surprise, this cat mask actually works on a family head like Traumerai and it, it just look, makes him look so stupid. So, of course, I mean, when I make these videos, I kind of want to think in the future, like, hey, maybe someone who hasn't read all the chapters is gonna like look at this down the line. 
So uh, right away I was like, oh my god, this might be good thumbnail material, but now I think about it, probably not, because I don't want to really spoil people like that hard. Uh, there's probably thumbnails I have that I fucked up on that, but I don't know. Anyway, let me get back into the chapter. I don't know why I branched off like that. So they, they have like this little like funny match, like Kasing makes uh like a little goofy face and it's kind of it kind of like brings down that intense feeling you initially got from the family heads it kind of brings it down like they have this aura this thick aura that makes everyone feel this pressure well i mean we don't really feel that anymore like in dorsey and uh Bellrier and enkidu they're running just fine but now it's like these family heads they, they kind of look like clowns like literally like the trauma eye and so well back to the chapter these guys goof around, Tramrai gets real fucking pissed, and he uses a unique technique that we've never seen before called disconnection. So the definition of this technique is it destroys the connection of all the things that his Shinzu touches. So that is the definition. So I guess all of like Gustang's animals that he summoned with his scripture pen thing, they like die, which I mean, Tramrai could have probably killed them by himself anyway. He's just being fancy here or automating everything. And this disconnection, it's very like very aggressive. Like you can see the shark bodies explode loading and ripping apart like it doesn't just like disconnect like you would think like unplug them from their life source like let's say you're unplugging a, a fucking ethernet cable from your computer and you no longer have internet i mean that's what disconnecting is right disconnecting from the fucking internet i don't know but that's how i thought it was like wi-fi but anyway it like ruptures them implodes them and they like get all fucking like gory with the with these with shark bodies and shit it's like really crazy so yeah Tramrai just mass slaughters all these fucking sharks and he gets really mad he gets really really mad he has a serious face now and he says if anyone must die it will be you gustang and that is where the chapter ends i don't know if we're gonna continue with this fight next chapter probably but I think we're gonna jump to something else because usually SIU does that. He like gets to a certain point in a fight and then he switches it up, which at this point I wouldn't mind because I'm kind of not really feeling it. I'll be honest guys. I'm not really feeling this fight because it's taking a little too long. I think we should have had all the warm up, all the preparations happen in like the first chapter of this fight. But like we're still playing around, like nobody's bleeding, nobody's hurt. Traumatized mask is still there. It's not all cracked like I thought it would be because Gustang bitch slapped him. It's like we're still warming up, and I just I just want want it to happen already. But I mean I can't really get too mad at SIU. I'm like giving him some time to like cook this up, I guess, because this is the first family leader battle we've seen. And I mean, I, I kind of want to enjoy the experience, but at the same time, it's like I already know none of these like techniques are gonna work against these family heads. I, like, I just want you guys to start fighting and start bleeding and start you know, like cutting each other up and get, have serious fights. Bring out your Shin Wan Ryu. We need to see your Shinzu Black Hole Spheres, guys. Like, come on, let's speed it up. So, I hope next chapter, next time we see this fight. If it's not next chapter, SIU cuts the bullshit and like just jumps into action. Like we got two chapters of prep already. We need to jump to the fucking action, dude. Like it's when it's going, this shit is dragging on. Like we need to speed it up. Like you've been, you've been blue balling us way too long, man. Other than that, like any final thoughts I have, like I like the direction SIU is taking. He, like these guys are best friends. They've, they've had a very long history ever since the beginning of their climb. They've, I mean, like uh, saying had the library, Tramari would do puzzles with him. He would try to like unlock himself in the library and, uh, until this day, they still do that. So like, it, it, it's really like interesting. It's different that these longtime friends now they're like mortal enemies. They're trying to kill each other. At least Gustang is trying to kill Tramrai. Tramrai is kind of defending himself because Gustang all of a sudden wants to kill everybody. I don't say that lightly. I like we, we know the context why he does, but to Tramrai and everyone else, it's like, oh my god, why does he want to kill us all of a sudden? But yeah, I, I do like the dynamics in this fight that it's not just out for blood like Dumas and Bomb. They actually are like, they, they have this history that doesn't make them like just strangers and like it takes away from any uh, like humanity or compassion from the fight. Like they, they are like 
you know, Gustang is trying to clown him, make fun of him, all that shit. So, hope you get what I'm saying. I like the dynamics, but I just wanted to speed up a little bit. But with all that said, not much else to say. We got a little bit of lore with uh, Tiara's pen. I mean, stuff we already knew that anything from the family leaders that they possess is stronger in their hands, other than like a scripture or a branch leader. I mean, we already knew that, but other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. So let me know what you think of this chapter below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next review.